So we got to talk about, you know, the transgender killing. So 23-year-old Malaysia Booker, she was found dead. She was shot on Saturday around 6.40 a.m. Uh, Dallas police responded to a report of a shooting. Now, a month prior to that, she was brutally assaulted by four men. And I know I watched the video. Did you guys watch the video? I did. Brutally assaulted by four men, hit with a brick. They broke her wrist. I think one man was arrested, but they're still looking for the other three. And then now, a month later, she's dead. I don't think that's a coincidence. What do you guys think? This, this whole thing, I'm just going to speak personally first. It, um... It bothers me because, personally for me, I ignored it. Like, when I saw the video in April about the transgender women getting beat up by um, black men, mm -hmm. of, of, you know, it was just something I saw and I was ignorant about it, didn't really think about it. And then it, you know, it took me to Saturday when I saw how she was killed a month later right. and then I started doing research on just how black transgender women have been getting killed have been 2018 killed. alone 26 in 28 26 four <clears throat> four in um, 2019 I just want to get their names um, Dana Martin and I just lost it hold on one sec Dana Martin um, Malaysia Booker like you just said Ashanti Carmen Claire Legato and Michelle Simmons you know these are women who are just trying to, to, to be live, comfortable to, with themselves to live their life yeah. and you know get killed and as a black man i feel like i failed to not putting awareness out there when i when i heard of these attacks i just because i don't know transgender women i don't i'm not knowledgeable enough about the transgender community or their lifestyle it was something i always put aside Right. And then when I find out these are black men who are attacking these women, these are black men who are going out to hurt women who are just trying to live live their lives. You know, those are yeah. those these four words that um that's been said to me years back <clears throat> that I've always lived by now is live and let live, live and let live. People want to be comfortable in their lives. Imagine like imagine living something that you're not comfortable with and you finally change. You feel good about it to attack someone. For the for who they want to be is disgusting. It's despicable, and I'm gonna make it now a thing where I put awareness out there for it because I feel bad for not even talking about. It. I'm always someone who's about social justice and community. And I always talk about right. Black Lives Matter, and this is a part of it as well. And you know, I'm glad that in Double M we have the platform where we can speak up and talk about you know these women. Who are getting their lives attacked and we can really start putting awareness out there because it's not right that mm -hmm. people are getting their lives taken away for who they believe or who they want to be and that's that's my take on it right yeah there. and it's it's you know you mentioned just feeling bad about not you know bringing awareness to it there were a lot of standbys watching filming right, that's and sick. not doing anything as they watch this woman get brutally attacked people were screaming and shouting but not one person stepped in to stop the attack it didn't happen for you know a couple of minutes in where other women dragged her out to safety but no one tried to stop these men from attacking her and they all stood around in a circle either recording or just watching but no one did anything and I think that right there is you know the bigger shame like that is so shameful that you would just watch this woman get hit in the head with a brick her wrist broken like you just witnessed an assault mm -hmm. you know and for the four men that put their hands on this woman like they should be ashamed of themselves absolutely and I mean that 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 line you just said there, Marva, live and let live, is real powerful because you think in a situation, whether it's transgender or, or you know, gay, bisexual, whatever the, your walk of life may be, you know, in these situations, when these girls out here harming people with the Not life bothering they bring, anybody. They bring in harm to anybody else's life just because they wanted to make a change in their life. And I mean, that's the way 
I look at it from my point of view. If you're, you're not being harmed by what somebody's trying to do and the way they're trying to live their life, if they're not bringing any pain, ache, agony, hurtful, anything towards your life, why make it a priority to make it your business and want to go to the lens of trying to attack somebody? Regardless of how you feel like, you know, I, I'm not for what they're doing. Why go to the lens of trying to say, I'm so upset about how this person is living their life that let me brutally attack them. Let me take their lives away from them. Like, who gives you that permission to do that because you're so upset in your feelings about how this person is going about their way of life? You wouldn't want somebody to attack you with how you're living, it, even if you're not transgender. Maybe because you have the wrong shoes on or something. You know, people do different things. We live in a society where if you wear the wrong color hat or something in the wrong neighborhood, your life's on the line. And that happens in some places. And I just look at it at a point where if you live in your life, and again, you're not bringing harm to anybody. Why make it a point to do that to somebody else? And it's sad to hear the situations of these women who are living their life in their own personal way, going about their, their life, doing their thing. And people want to bring pain, ache, agony to them and their loved ones, too. Their family, yeah. They, they lo this, this, these families, friends, they've lost somebody. They've lost somebody because other people are so hateful about how they're living their lives. That's 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 the worst part of it to me that that's where people are headed to do you guys think it was a coincidence this whole thing happening a month apart her getting jumped and, and then getting shot, getting I, shot. Don't, I doubt it i really don't think there's like this is it's just too close together and it was just that video went viral you know and i think that she became a target in someone's eyes they for, haven't they haven't caught who um who killed her yet? Yeah, they have but no suspects so far. One of the um, one of the people who did jump her was released out of jail like a week before, so you know that there, there's obviously suspicion there. Mm -hmm. And if we hear anything else, obviously we're gonna put it put it out there. But um, a couple of weeks ago on this show, we spoke on you know I think Mike spoke on it, the power of allyship and just being allies mm -hmm. and. That's what they need right now. You know, transgender people, they need allies from everyone. And they can't just be people from the transgender or people from the LBGTQ community speaking out on this. It needs to be us. It needs to be everybody. It needs to be everyone speaking out on these hate crimes because that's the only way this is going to, you know, be spread away. This is the first attack that I've seen got um, national news. But that's not enough. It needs to be covered more. We need to start, you know, putting emphasis on protecting our transgender men and our transgender women and protecting everyone. Like, what kind of life are we trying to live here? What type of legacy are we trying to leave yeah. behind? Yeah. Again, and I see this coming up in the comments as well. Like, they're not hurting anybody or hurting themselves. You know, what makes it your right to try to bring pain to somebody else. It doesn't make any sense. And it's also saying that being an ally is important. We did talk about this on a previous show. You know, it can't just be, you know, I think in that episode we were talking about, you know, uh, Corver. Corver, you know, yeah, Kyle Corver, a basketball player, being an ally to a, a fellow teammate who was black, went through a, a situation with the police and how he spoke up you know, being on the other side, wanting to be an ally and support. That's just what it really is all about. It looks great if, you know, you're walking with somebody in the same, who lives the same life as you, you know, trying to fight something. But if you see somebody on the other side of it who doesn't live that same life for you, who sees it from a different perspective and wants to stand up and say, hey, you know, I see what you're going through, I understand it, you know, and I don't want to see any kind of pain, you know, hate coming your way, so I'm going to support you to try to make sure that you know, you find peace just maybe like how I find peace in a sense, something like that. That is very important to do. I agree. Well, the police are tagging this as a hate crime, so it will be added to the one man who was arrested, his charges. So hopefully they do catch the other three men that were involved, and hopefully they do catch the killer who, you know, took the life of Malaysia Booker. So hopefully... Men, men especially black men, we have to do better. We need to protect all our women. The fact that that video is so crazy, like, it was really four men jumping a transgender woman, 
like throwing bricks, throwing a brick at her. It's it's disgusting. Sick, like man. we need to hold each other accountable for things like this. We need to, we can't scream one thing and do the opposite. We can't scream about brutality. And we can't scream and... about Black Lives Matter. Yep. We can't That's scream true. about none of that stuff. We can't even take care of our own. Take care of each other. Let's let's take care of each other. We can't jumping a woman like yo. Whether she she switched or not, doesn't like come on. And 